Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome back, it's Jordan here. Today we're going to be taking a detailed look at the LEGO Viking Village that was designed by Brickhammer. The really cool thing about this set is that it actually won the LEGO Ideas Target fan vote, and that's why it's becoming a LEGO set. You know what else is pretty cool about this set? It is 2,103 pieces and a suggested retail price of 130 US dollars. That is not bad at all. And the box art is actually looking pretty slick. On the side of it, we've got the watchtower. The back features the removable components. And also some of the action scenes that can be created within. And then just a nice angle of the set. The set comes with one instruction manual. And inside you can meet the Vikings and learn about their community, styles, careers, and expeditions and travels. And you can also meet the fan designer and the Lego designers. The build is split into three different sections and consists of 15 bags. We start the build with the blacksmith. This minifigure here has some nice print detailing on the torso and legs, and you'll also notice some custom print detailing on the Thor's hammer. She's got a pretty energetic face as well. She comes with a paintbrush for painting the shields as well. Pretty cool hair piece, but I'm not really sure what's up with that hole in the back of it. The back side of her torso also features some nice print detailing. I like the little sigil there with the hammers and helm. The blacksmith structure was actually a really nice build. First off, it's triangular shape. It's really well constructed, and I like the use of the snot bricks and bar elements. The water is in dark azure, and the ground is dark tan, and there is some snow found throughout this set as well. We have a nice snow-capped tree right here, some roots growing into the water, and then there is a carving right here, which is a shield tile that is print detail. In fact, there are no stickers in this set. Really nice triangular shaped roof here. Really like this part usage to create the smoke coming out of the smokestack or chimney. Some dark tan masonry bricks. And this roof can actually be removed. And it's really well constructed, just using plates, some inverted slopes, and then some other snot bricks just to keep it attached in this triangular shape. And it's really nicely detailed with tiles and studs and also some curved slopes on the top. The structure is actually really cool as well. We've got the columns in each corner in reddish brown, and then these actually look like panels, right? But they're not. They're actually snot-mounted nougat tiles. This add a really nice texture to the building. Then we have the uh, gold windows there with the reddish brown window frames and look at the use of these parts right here to create this snow covered tree Those are the new fern elements in white Inside the blacksmith we have an additional helmet and also a barrel full of tools such as the pitchfork sword Hammer and poker stick a candle on the table there a sword that has yet to be painted and also The forge right here. What's really cool about the forge is I can actually press this and those flames will move up and down. And the forge is really well constructed with brackets, G-slopes, masonry bricks, regular slopes, headlight bricks, arches. This is a really neat build. So there we have the blacksmith. Now let's move on to the next structure, which is the longhouse. The longhouse starts with the chief minifigure. Check out his shield. It is so cool. It's got some awesome print detailing on it, like the yellow and also Odin's wolf. He also comes with a large sword and a classic Viking helmet. He's got some white hair print detailing on his face, Groot shoulder pads, and then some really nice print detailing on his torso and legs, which of course carries over onto his backside as well. However, it's not on his arms or side of legs. The exterior of the longhouse looks really good. It's built using the reddish brown profile bricks and then has the uprights in the dark brown, the curved slopes and also tiles. Those are snot mounted in spot there. Some gold accents found all throughout the building. Included in that is some gold flowers. And you can see some print detailing above the door and also on the roof. And then you've got the log print detailing on those one by one circular pieces as well. Really cool front door that can be opened up there. It's symmetrical, so it's the same on this side. And then there is a back window as well. And just like the blacksmith, this roof can actually be removed. It is a little bit different. It just uses the plates and the grill elements to add some nice texture. There's also like a top part right here uh, with some additional windows and an additional 
uh, triangular roof on top, and then some more gold detailing. The entire structure is lifted up off the plate, so it's one brick there, but then actually the longhouse is lifted up off the plate another brick, and then the front step is built using some tiles, plates, and also cheese slopes in light gray. The front double door is clipped in spot, it's tiled off in dark brown, and is based on reddish brown plate. This roof is actually built much differently than the blacksmith's. It can actually hinge, you can see the nougat clips attached to the modified 1x2s in reddish brown. And that's actually the structure that the top roof is built onto. And you can see how it can hinge right there. So it's pretty neat. Just sort of a different style of triangular roof that was pretty fun to build. I also like the gold decoration on either side and the use of these gold hot dogs on the top. After removing the roof, you can see some of the interior details, such as the cooking station in the center there, some weapons that are mounted to the wall, like the axe and the spear, an additional Odin's wolf shield, and then a chair over here that is a pretty clever build with some banisters behind that, a goblet to the right on a small circular table there, and also a candle on the left. And then up against the wall on a small table, there is a drumstick and a goblet. Overall, I do like this build. The exterior is amazing, but the interior I feel is lacking a little bit other than the chair and the fire. That's cool, but I feel like that table is pretty basic and maybe there could have been something else in the interior. But now we're ready to move on to the watchtower. And the watchtower comes with our last two minifigures. We have an archer on the left here. Honestly, the print detailing on these minifigures is pretty amazing. I really like the shield maiden's print detailing as well. She has a different shield. It's not Odin's wolf, but it's Odin's raven. So I like how you have the variety of shields in this set. And once again, like look at that print detailing on the torso and the legs. She actually is the only one that comes with an alternate face. Right now she's winking, and now she's smirking. She also comes with a pretty cool hairpiece, but once again, there's a hole in the top of it. I really like this guy's face right here, and you can truly see it when you remove his helmet. So the blacksmith was sort of triangular shaped, I guess not really. Then we have the longhouse, which was rectangular shaped, and then the watchtower, which once again has an odd shape to it. I can't even really call that a triangle, but it is built uh, using some triangular plates. This was a pretty cool part of the build. There is quite a bit of open space right here, but I guess you can position your minifigs. I think if there was like another mini build down here, that might have been a good use of space, but it just seems sort of open. I like all the different like part types and colors that you have down here. There's also these barrels and a keg on top. Those are printed pieces, so that's pretty cool. This can actually hinge downward. I'm not sure why. And then we also have some fish that just fell over. So there's two different watchtowers here. The larger one on the left is pretty cool. I love all the different slopes that were used around the base of it. Some pretty awesome techniques. Also, there's more of those bar elements that are stuck between the two headlight bricks, and that is involved with clipping it all together, which we're gonna do once we have a look at this one. There is a cave underneath the large watchtower. There's not much inside there. No like hidden treasure or anything. I feel like that's sort of a missed opportunity. I do like the part usage that was used to create the mouth of the cave though, like those arches and also the different varieties of slopes. Then we have our first rock panel right there behind the fish. And there is another rock panel right over here on the base of the smaller tower. Once again, you got some nice slopes on the base of the smaller tower as well. I really like these slopes that were used here that create the rock staircase up to the door of the large tower. And that door has some nice part usage as well with the wizarding wands there and it's just clipped in spot. And there is some nice use of different uh, connector elements here to create the awning going around the first floor of the tower and the cylinders on the outside in the dark brown color. So some really nice color contrast here with dark tan, light tan, nougat, and dark brown, and then once again, those gold accents that are found consistently throughout this build. And you can't actually remove the roofs from the watchtower, but you actually have to remove the whole side panel, just like that. So that can pop off. Then you can see some interior details, such as that small table with the uh, candle. 
And then nothing crazy in here. There is uh, just like a pumpkin element there. Some cherries in a crate behind that. A ladder going up to the top of the watchtower. And then the connection of this bridge here, which is built using those like, I forget what you call them. They're like string elements, but it's not really string. It's like rubberized, which is pretty neat. Most of the time you see those with strings. So I'm happy to see like this really cool element that creates this suspension bridge, bringing you to the top of the smaller tower where we have a flag and then another one of those uh, printed shield elements with Odin's Raven. So yeah, pretty cool little watchtower. Why don't we connect all three sections, the watchtower, the longhouse, and the blacksmith. So the connector elements on either side of the boathouse are actually gonna just attach to those bar elements that are sandwiched between the headlight bricks. And when they're all clipped together, this set sort of grabs my attention. When they're individual units, I'm like, ah, I don't really know how I feel about this. But now that I see them all together, it actually is pretty cool. I just like, like the different shapes that we have here, also the different depths of the building, and the different heights as well, because this is on like ground level, this one's raised up a brick, this one's raised up several bricks, and I just like that. The different depths and also the different angles of everything, it just really appeals to me. It looks pretty good. Yeah, so that's actually looking pretty good. I like that. First, I was like, I don't really know what I'm going to do with this set because I don't know where I'm going to put it in the Lego City, right? Like, is this going to go in the Lego City? Potentially, but where? Like, where am I going to put a Viking village in the Lego City? There's not really a spot for it. So it's like, can this go on the shelves? It's like, I guess it can. It's a pretty cool display piece. It's got some great minifigures and some wicked cool part usage. And once again, just the depths, heights, and dimensions is really neat. So there we have the Viking Village set. A really good price, that's for sure, especially when you factor in the minifigures and the piece count. The quality of the build is there and it was a lot of fun to put together. I just don't know where I'm gonna put it because I don't really have space in my Lego city. I guess it's gonna have to go on display maybe beside the El Dorado Fortress because that's not in the Lego city either. Yeah, pretty cool though. Lego Vikings is coming back here in 2023, but it is a Lego idea set. It's not like an actual Vikings theme. Let me know what you think of this set by commenting below. Please remember to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for some more great stuff. And farewell.